Welcome to the New Process Podcast. Learn all the tools, methods, and best practices combined with people, e- emotions, and a, and a human-centric mindset to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Uh, level. And, here, and, here. and here is your host, Marco Kloppenberg. Yeah, welcome to episode 49 of the New Process Podcast. Today, we'll deep dive into process automation by exploring Bonita Soft. Therefore, I'm talking to Charles Suyard. Charles is CEO and co-founder of Bonita Soft. After co-founding the company in 2009, he became CTO and six years later, COO of the company. Since September 2022, he leads Bonita Soft as CEO. Before co-founding Bonita Soft, Charles was head of the core Bonita software development team within Bull Information Systems. Charles holds a master's degree in computer science from Polytech de Grenoble. Despite his extensive experience working across cultures, he is through and through Grenoblois, born, raised, and educated in the innovation capital of the Alps, where Bonita Soft has its worldwide head office. Bonita Soft's mission is to unleash the full potential of development teams to create automated, process-based, sustainable applications that support innovation and competitive advantage for business. Their product, the Bonita platform, is primarily used to automate processes, but as you'll learn, you can also use it for process insights. With an ecosystem of more than 240,000 members and customers in more than 75 countries, Bonita Soft provides an or maybe the most widely used open source platform for digital process automation. What's also super interesting is that the entire Bonita company has made a commitment to the community and customers to continue to work hard to make both the open source as well as the commercial editions better every day. In 2024, there are 74 employees in France, Spain, and Canada. And what I find also interesting is that Bonita Soft was certified as great place to work in 2023. So in the interview, you will learn what the underlying philosophy of Bonita Soft is, what the core elements of the tool are, how the Bonita platform looks like, and how to proceed to automate processes. Charles also gives some very interesting examples. You will learn how to use the platform to analyze your process performance. We are talking about the new process principles and how Bonita Soft supports to involve the people into the work on processes, as well as how Bonita Soft supports to disrupt established processes. In addition, Charles shares his view on future trends of the BPM tool market in general and what Bonita Soft has on their roadmap for the future. Finally, he also gives some advice on how to start process automation with Bonita Soft. So enjoy the interview with Charles Suyat and Please excuse my poor French pronunciation. I did learn French at school, but as you can hear, I wasn't really successful with it. Anyway, enjoy the interview. And now, let's start to rethink processes. Yeah, welcome to the New Process Podcast, Charles. I'm super curious to learn more about Bonitasoft today. So, welcome, Charles. Hello. Good morning, Miko. Yeah, it's great to have you here. And as always, let's start right away with a check-in. So what do you prefer in an aircraft, aisle or window seat? Oh, actually, I would say I prefer window seat. You know, I don't like much spending time, you know, in, in an aircraft. So most of the time I prefer, you know, sleeping. And I, uh, I don't, don't like very much being disturbed by other passengers or, you know, flight crew. So my goal is to be fully rested and, and, and ready to start working when I land. So. I would definitely say window seats. Yeah, that's that's a good approach. And what is your favorite airport? <laughs> for the same reason, I don't have actually, uh, you know, I don't like airports very much because they are kind of a waste of time for me. I have a lot of work to, to get uh, to do uh, every day. So if I have to choose one, I would probably say San Francisco, but for, <laughs> but, you know, uh, a reason being to, you know, close to the great burgers areas you, you have in San Francisco. There are several places where you can have a, a great bur- burger before, uh, you know, <laughs> starting the journey. So this yeah. is the main reason. Okay, that, that sounds good. Perfect. Yeah, nice. And what was the best process you have ever experienced? 
maybe I can share an experience I'm, we are quite proud of at Bintasoft because there are some strong results you know, associated with that use case. We have been working with a company that operates in lot, lotteries and betting games. And, and you, know, you know, those guys uh, have to operate with a lot of physical sales outlets. And we have been working on a process for this company helping those outlets to get, uh, you know, self-care agreement settlements. And they move from from three weeks to to less than an hour, which has a you know tremendous result. And what we like about that use case, you know, apart from those goals uh, achievement, is that it's involving both customers, providers, employees, many systems, document management, APIs, you know, business rules. It also ended up with um you know a portal for business customers as well as internal employees. So a, a lot, a lot of uh, different features have been have been used, and this company is targeting to have its entire product and services portfolio to be covered with with Bonita. You know, so that's a pretty major, nice use case for Bonita Soft. Yeah, and that's cool. That's super interesting. Perfect. And how would you describe your relationship to processes? Personally, I love them. I'm a pretty <laughs> organized and and structured uh, guy, and um, also because I'm I'm convinced, you know, processes actually help organization improve the way they operate. They are a key approach because process is not only about tooling or automation, it's more it's it's a mindset, it's, it's a way to think. It gives a lot of visibility into the business. It allows business users to make very informed decisions to enter an iterative continuous improvement loop. It's also a great approach, you know, to cross department boundaries. This is, you know, we, we can talk about that later, but I'm I'm sure this is where Business process management in general is providing a lot of value. It's also a nice approach and and tooling that increases collaboration between teams. You know, we have technical mm -hmm. teams actually implementing processes and and business teams benefiting from those process based applications. And it provides you know very strong and established results like you know reducing failures, reducing mistakes. It also plays a, um, a strong role in keeping motivation of employees high, you know, because if they can use friendly and and efficient uh, application, they are happy at work. So it enables business owners and knowledge workers to boost their efficiency. So I definitely love processes. Okay. Can you recall when this love began? Was there a specific moment when you realized that or did it just happen over time? Oh, that's a nice question. I guess when I really realized that was when we achieved our first customer use case, because it's okay. always different when it's something you feel or you think that is pretty, you know, individual or self-centric. I have to say that it's well, more than 20 years ago in a previous company where I was already, I was a developer in a previous life, but in a BPM yeah. department already. And, you know, we, we implemented several customer projects using a process-based technology. And at that time, we already... We have seen the benefits from putting processes in place. So I guess it's, you know, more than 20 years ago with, with a customer reference, I would say. Okay. And then fast forward 20 years into the future where we are now. So you are now CEO of Bonita Soft. What is the underlying philosophy of Bonita Soft? From the beginning, you know, our mission has been to unleash development teams. You know, we are convinced that processes have a major impact when they are about complex processes and and core or critical use cases. And, mm -hmm. and so we, we made a, a strong choice at the beginning of the company was to equip development teams with a strong tool suite that enables them to produce you know, very strong process-based application with the expected mm -hmm. level of integration within the information system and that you know, actually provide a real answer to business needs. Mm -hmm. So that comes with some, you know, We cannot say that and, and have uh, the entire market as a, an ideal customer profile. So we are working with mid to large organization. Mm -hmm. Of course, those one looking at improving their operational excellence. Our tool is targeting, you know, is, is designed by developers for developers, but actual produced applications is is for employees, customers, or providers, as we as we said for uh, uh, the concrete example about the lottery company. Yeah, so I, I would say we are helping organizations spinning up app delivery. So we we help them with you know 
involving a broader audience in process design, thanks to some you know, standard notations. And we also help development teams overcome application development challenges. So we have to play on, on both sides of the game. So this is what I, what I would say. We definitely focus on, on complex uh, processes with cross-department uh, initiatives. And it, you know, it comes through uh, two product lines as of today. So we have one product dedicated to automating processes. So this one is designed for development teams and it helps those teams to build customized business applications so that we have a very customized tailored experience offered to end users. And the second one, which is a more recent one called Bonita Process Insight, which is targeting business users and helping them to analyze, understand, and improve processes over time with a lot of KPIs, objectives, and, and this kind of stuff. Okay, that's uh, interesting. And how how does the tool look like? How how does it feel? So you said there are different types of users, but can you? And that's the challenge in a podcast to explain how something looks like. But uh, can you give us an idea of how Bonita Soft looks and feels like? Yeah. So we have several components, as you can imagine. You know, we have some things that we call a studio. This is where Developers spend most of their time doing visual programming. So they have to model processes using the BPM and standard notation. They can model business data and user interfaces using what we call our UI designer. So this is a main component. It's an application they can install on their desktop or laptop, and it's pure visual programming. There is no coding in that part. But as I said, we are focusing on complex processes and complex processes requires a tailored approach and to fulfill that requirement we we have built a very open architecture coming with a lot of extension points and those extension points are available in many places of the product suite and developers can use them to extend the solution but following their favorite and best practices so they don't have to code inside our tooling we expect all developers they already have their you know own intellij github whatever uh, you know Everything is already set up for them. So we have preferred doing developer tools integration rather than recreating a new development environment for them. So, you know, one, one thing is Bonita Studios. The other thing is using their own tools to extend uh, the solution using, you know, widely adopting, uh, adopted and open languages. We are leveraging only you know, Java, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, only standard and widely adopted technologies. And then, you know, the, you have the resulting applications that are the one going to product and being used in life by end users. So they are modern web applications. So what the soft is producing is a web application, process-based application, and users even don't know they are using Bonita at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is about the automation suite and on, on process uh, and the process inside product. It's a very simplified process intelligent tool dedicated to business users. So it's a really modern UI, you know, kind of BI capabilities apply to processes. You can drill down filters, use data sets and this kind of stuff. Okay, that's super interesting. And you said in the beginning, I as a developer could map processes in BPM in 2.0 and uh, use this as basis for automating processes? Yeah, uh, this is actually the notation that we have chosen for years now mm -hmm. to uh, help both IT and business to collaborate, you know, because there's this very important phase of the modeling of the process that needs to be, from our perspective, an iterative approach. And it's useful at several times in the journey. The first one is, of course, the modeling phase. But as you understand, our second product is more on the optimization phase. But on both moments of the journey, you need to have a good representation of what your process is actually doing. And you need to have, in the same room, both IT and business to explain and then improve, implement the next version of the process. So this is why it's very important to rely on a standard notation. And we have chosen BPM in two that is widely adopted as well. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. But this is often the discussion with with my customers, which notation should we use to map processes? So, and I always say it depends on the purpose why you are mapping processes. So if you're planning to automate processes, yeah, for sure, BPM in 2.0, full blown, makes sense but if your uh, purpose is to map processes of the overall organization to use the process documentation to discuss processes with employees then maybe bpm 2.0 in, in a full-blown version even if you take out all the complexity 
may not be the perfect notation to use. But in your case, your customers are using the process mapping only for specific business processes they want to automate, not for the overall organization to discuss uh, with the employees, or? Definitely. We, we, are, we are not a full process mapping technology. Our customers are modeling their in our tools, they are modeling only processes they want to automate. So it's it's obviously a sub a sub part of all processes of a company. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's uh, good to know. And can you share an example of a business process on how to automate that with Bonita Soft, just to get a better understanding of how this really works? I can say it depends. Each customer has its, its own approach. Yeah. It depends if you are automating or re-automating an already existing process, or if you are designing a brand new process that is actually not yet automated. But in any case, you know, you need to have this initial phase where both business and IT need to sit in the same room and mm -hmm. define the major milestone of the process and this kind of stuff. Our recommendation is definitely not to look for the perfect solution day one. Our technology has been designed to be integrated in a perpetual improvement loop. So our recommendation to customers is go live as soon as you can, because as you mentioned, in the process mapping industry, you can involve employees in, in the tool directly. When it, it comes about to automation, mm -hmm. you need to have live feedback from end users. So our recommendation is to go live as soon as they can and then improve over time. So initial phase is, of course, finding what we can call the MVP, you know, the minimum viable product or process, and then design business data and user interfaces. We have a strong um, journey about continuous integration and continuous deployment, testing, this kind of stuff, because as I said, we are focusing our effort on complex and tailored processes, which comes with strong associated goals. So it needs to work and to be high quality processes, applications. So we have uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous improvement in the loop. And then you go into production. You use our tool being Winter Process Insight to understand, you know, using filters, data set, you can compare version, see what is working, not working, identify bottlenecks, and then, you know, start a new improvement loop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, that's interesting. Let's make it even more specific. Let, let's imagine I'm a process owner of an HR process, like hiring new employees. Yeah, And this is done more in a traditional paper-based way at the moment. So how would you approach this? And how what do I need to use BonitaSoft as tool to automate this process? So what, what do you need to use BonitaSoft is to have a development team that have the required skills to make the extensions to our solution. So depending on the capabilities you are looking for, you, you may need some only user interfaces, uh, specialists or backend developers to develop extensions to your information system. So I don't know, maybe your HR system, I don't know, Luca or whatever, uh, if you are using some of them. And then you need to collaborate with that team to put on a, on a paper and the developer will then move it to a BPM and diagram as a design of your uh, process, and then you need to build UI and business data. There is a phase that is collecting, which is not covered by our tool, actually. You need to collect probably with your employees what are the hiring steps uh, mm -hmm. of your process. But you know we are assuming that it is done before uh, jumping in our, our tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then... At the end, what do I need as infrastructure? And uh, do I create a real application which I then install on on my local infrastructure, or is that still something which runs on on your platform? Yeah, we we, we have both modern on premise and and cloud deployments as part of our offering, and we have really modern deployment. I don't know how technical is our audience today, but you know we are leveraging this kind of. Docker, Kubernetes uh, technologies, as you, can, as you can imagine. And you can deploy that in your, on your own infrastructure, which is obviously always private cloud now. No one has a hardware server in his bedroom anymore. <laughs> uh, or, we can, or, or we can host for you. We have a cloud offering. We, we, you know, we host and we, we ensure the quality of service of the hosted application. But all, all this is fully automated. And as I said, being part of a continuous integration process. That, okay. that we that we package with a, with a tool to make sure the experience for developers and application owners is really is really smooth. Yeah. Okay. 
perfect. Thanks for, for this example. Okay, now we talked about creating processes. How can an employee figure out more about the performance of a specific business process? Yeah, actually, this is um, the scope that is covered by our product called Bonita Process Insight, which is mm -hmm. dedicated to, to business personas. This tool has been designed to boost performance and productivity. So actually, it is this is the goal of the of the tool to guide business users towards better decisions and better decisions are guided by process performance analysis. So this tool comes with several dashboards. The first one is called the overview dashboard. This is where you can drill down into your process executions and, and mm -hmm. look for any details, look for bottlenecks and, and do some deep analysis. And then you have the comparison dashboard we, where you can on the same screen have two execution data set of the same or different process version. So you can mm -hmm. compare if a new version is actually performing better than an old uh, version, or you can use the same version on both sides of the screen and have a different data set and say, maybe, I don't, I don't know, I want to I wanna know if um, you know, loan requests with a high amount have a different performance than loan requests with a low loan amount, and then you can mm -hmm. compare execution. And this is where you can also associate both IT and business because we are leveraging this BPM2 notation to represent the flows, the variants. You know, this is a term that is uh, often used in, in process mining industry. So maybe as an example, you know, we have a, um, a customer in the insurance industry that is monitoring performance on many areas of the process. Of course, they want to make sure that insurance request gets an answer in a mm -hmm. really appropriate time, you know. So this is where they use a goal setting feature of Bonita Process Insight. You know, you can set a goal on a given process and, and look if you are above or under the threshold that you set. But you, they also want to monitor how long it takes to their employees to provide such an answer in the appropriate time. So they want to track the time spent on a given task, if there are some transitions that takes more time to be executed, if there are some patterns, bottlenecks somewhere, and so that they can look for areas of improvement. So this is definitely a tool oriented to track process uh, performance so that we can help business teams with business delta and process execution to improve the overall experience. Okay, and to do this, I need to automate the process with your software before, or can I apply this to all kinds of processes? No, we, we made a strong choice on that. You know, we are not a process mining vendor. Yeah, okay. So we, our, our process insight tool is fully connected and integrated with our automation data. So it's, lever it's leveraging Bonita process automation, the first product data to provide all those insights on, on the automation. Okay. Wow, that's that's interesting. I think that's something uh, for the process architects out there who are working on improving their processes. So that's super interesting to have this connection between the developers on the one hand side and more the business guys uh, doing the evaluation of the performance and thinking about ideas on how to improve processes. That's cool. Wow. You know, I do a lot of research on how to get to more human-centric BPM approach, and therefore we have these uh, new process principles. And I would like to know how Bonita Soft supports to involve the people working in the process into the work on the process. So how do you do this? Yeah, so the main answer is, is on the design of the process because this mm -hmm. is actually what gets it execu executed afterwards. So the BPM2 notation is a... Uh, strong bridge between technical and business users. So we, we provide a large set of elements, you know, activities, gateways, transition. So it re drastically reduces the time to production and it also clarifies what is executed afterwards using this Bonita Process Insight product. But we also have plans for the future to have end users directly involved in, in the improvement of the automation. I don't know if, if there is a question on that later, but we are planning to leverage generative AI, of course, to involve end users in having kind of self-improvement okay. of processes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can talk about uh, your outlook into the future uh, in a few minutes, but first, I would like to talk about another new process principle, which is to disrupt established processes. I really love this to break patterns and to question existing processes. So how does Bonita Soft 
support to disrupt established processes. Yeah, you know, the automation market is now designed by analysts as a really huge and, and wide market, and, and it comes with several kinds of automations. And definitely, Bonita Soft is playing the end-to-end -end automation play, which helps companies to revamp their processes in general, which is, mm -hmm. the, you know, benefiting a lot to end users. And what what is really beneficial uh, into you know, thanks to this approach, is that we can, at the same time, revamp the end-to-end -end process while we reuse, we leverage existing solutions. So we have many customers saying that the benefits they get from using Bonita is to combine new stuff with existing stuff. So it helps organization cross silos and department boundaries without, you know, breaking or disturbing the way some of the successful, we can say, processes actually perform. So it's a very nice way to improve end-to-end -end processes, you know, using Bonita because we have a strong connectivity framework. So it, it's really nice. We, we, we can have some examples, uh, if you want, on, uh, on that topic. Yeah, For sure. example, we have been working with a company in Spain, you know, specializing in colon cancer detection. And th they were, you know, spending weeks activating, I don't know if you can say that, or scheduling a surgery or detecting colon cancer and using Bonita they have crossed silos, reduced the number of papers, identified stale processes, because I guess, you know, stale processes are, are a huge concern for companies. And as, as a result, they, they divided by, I don't remember, 20 maybe, the time it takes to identify and plan a, a surgery and it's saving, you know, many, many, many lives. So I would say the, the major impact of Bonita is rethinking or reorchestrating end-to-end -end processes. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's, that's super interesting. So we already learned a lot about the tool. Is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners how Bonita helps to rethink processes before we look into the future? Yeah, maybe on the philosophy we have, you know, I, I mentioned several times... Uh, you know, the importance that we have for iterative approaches. Yeah. BPM or processes are sometimes seen as, a, you know, too structured or too heavy approaches. I, mm -hmm. I want to say that uh, with Bonita, you can have an iterative approach. We support iteration. It's a very good opportunity as well with the architecture we have chosen by the way, which is called self-contained application. Mm -hmm. You can design domain-specific applications and it comes with a lot of benefits in terms of isolation, maintenance, deployment, or even mm -hmm. time to market, you know, by identifying from a business perspective, you know, because processes are, are mean to better uh, organization excellence. So it, it provides, you know, really nice results and it's, it's quite easy to set up and well-designed. It can be very fast. And maybe something else um, as a link to the previous questions on the end-to-end -end, uh, approach, we can say that we are really well shaped to be combined with RPA, mm -hmm. which is also a strong technology being part of the automation uh, market. It's very good to combine both approaches. You know, RPA is task-level automation and BPM yeah. is end-to-end -end process automation. So both combined can be a very, very nice perspective for companies. RPA has a strong short-term ROI because it, it changes task-level performance right away, but it's really hard to maintain. And end-to-end -end processes are long-lasting uh, profits. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you for these insights. And let's look into the future. So what trends do you see in the BPM tool market overall for the coming years? Yeah, so something very, very positive about processes, and I'm sure we'll be uh, okay with that, as you love processes as well, sure. <laughs> I, I would say, uh, is that there are processes everywhere. And what, what we have seen, you know, thanks to app stores and in any kind of new companies being created every day, there are processes or workflow. A lot of uh, applications are calling that workflows as well. Modules in many apps. You can design small, easy processes in many, many, many applications. So my vision of the future for the BPM tool market is that our value will definitely be on handling complex cross-department cross processes. A lot of vertical specialist tools are already providing some simple workflow modules to handle internal or unique department um, processes. So mm -hmm. I guess the future of BPM is 
complex cross-department processes, core business operations, and with a strong mix of people, systems, and boats. This is mm-hmm. a, a, actually what we bet on at Bonita Soft. We are focused on building processes involving, at the same time, systems, humans, and boats, and focused on end-to-end automation, so long, long-lasting long automation. I guess this is the future of the market. Okay. And what about the hot topic AI? <laughs> yeah. So, of course, AI is part of the roadmap for us as well. You know, we have this perpetual optimization loop uh, in mind for Bonita Process Insight. As I explained, as of today, you can automate and then you can use uh, BPI to understand, visualize, and look for optimization areas, but you still have to implement the modification by yourself. So, one, one of the usage we would like to do from Gen AI is to be able, as we have this advantage of having both automation data and you know, the way we look at it, we know the models and, and the architecture and all mm-hmm. that. So we, we can leverage Gen AI to automatically improve just like, uh, you know, the Tesla autopilot uh, approach. Mm-hmm. We can identify the bottlenecks, suggest a fix, and an end user can just say, okay, fix it. And we can fix it uh, by ourselves. So this is definitely something we we plan to have in this perpetual loop perpetual optimization loop using Gen AI. And on the automation side, you know, a lot of um, market vendors are going towards generating applications faster. You know, you mm-hmm. can use AI for generating processes. You, know, you can just text-based approach and then you generate processes or UIs or data. I'm not saying we are not going that way, but probably not our main priority. What mm-hmm. our customers are saying is that there is a, another area where Gen AI can be very, very fruitful. Maybe I can come back uh, to my insurance uh, use case I had um, yeah. previously in the podcast. Insurance are receiving like every day thousands of requests from from their customers. And most of the time it's an email. Mm-hmm. Best case, it's it's a form in a bottle where they say they describe their pain and why they are contacting you. Mm-hmm. They attach the attached document and and they put figures or numbers in the email. My contract reference is, but I have not, uh, I did not receive the reimbursement for my surgery on uh, December 12, which was a 2000k, whatever you know. So it's a lot of data, and and you need a human to read that and to choose which process needs to be started and to fill the data appro- appropriately, probably Gen AI can be a strong enabler on automating that part, which is not you know, high value oriented for human. So this is something we are looking at as well. Okay. Oh, that's, that's a super interesting example. I just had a workshop with a customer, I think last week, where we talked about that they are receiving requests or information from suppliers about availability of products and uh, especially when products are not available. And unfortunately, they don't get that in a standardized format. They just get emails. And there we were wondering if it's possible to send the emails to an AI, let that process the input and put that into a database to really process what the the suppliers sent them. So that's uh, something we discussed. Yeah, a, I guess it's the exact same use case in a different yeah. industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's cool. And uh, to be more specific, what is on uh, the Bonita Soft roadmap exactly for the upcoming releases? So we plan to boost our new release product, uh, Bonita Process Insight. We want to mm-hmm. add uh, Gen AI as soon as we can. Uh, custom dashboard. We want to improve this uh, perpetual loop um, optimization. So that, that's one of our major mm-hmm. focus. Mm-hmm. On the other side, we, we want to keep our DNA on enabling and development teams being very productive. So speeding up the go-to-market on the automation side. So main teams are speeding up time to time to market on the automation side mm-hmm. and improving the feature set and, and optimization loop for winter processing side. Okay, cool. That's interesting. And if I now remember, I, I'm the owner of this HR process and I want to have a closer look onto if I could use your tool to automate my processes. So what about the cost? What budget do I need? Yeah, so our processing model is really progressive. You know, you can start at a at a quite quite nice price. We are always focusing on, on a mid to large organization, you know, so mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not a matter of... Uh, $10 per month, of course, but uh, our pricing is based on the number of process executions that you are actually executing. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. uh, 
it starts around 50k a year and then it scales uh, depending on the number of uh, cases you have to to automate but it's, it's very progressive the price per case is of course decreasing with volume so for automation and data process insight on both sides it's process based metrics because we are a process company <laughs> that's very good okay and so do you also provide the consulting capacity and the developers or can i just get the tool and then i need other capacity to do the development yeah sure so we we have a professional service system that can get you up and running we are providing training services as well as expertise and we have a um, a dedicated offering being what we call a turnkey. So a lot of our customers want to, you know, get a strong return on investment and, and very quickly. So the best choice for them in that kind of situation is to involve our professional service team to get the first process in production as mm -hmm. fast as they can. So it's usually one or two months maximum. Again, we are we are focusing on complex processes. It cannot be one day. So yeah, we, we, have, we have this bunch of professional services, but we also have a strong network of partners, integrators, partners. You, you, you can rely on them for large volume processes or projects. Okay. So let's imagine uh, you made me curious and I want to learn more about the tool. Where can I go to? Can I get a demo or how does this work out? Yeah, sure. So there are several paths you can leverage. So I did not mention that, but we are an open source company. So our we have two kinds of offering. We have a community offering that is open source and free, of course, coming with limited set of features mm -hmm. and, and some constraints. And then we have an enterprise offering. So depending on the complexity of your project, if you are really a small company with a small project, the best for you is probably to get started with community. If you have a You know, if you are a mid to large company and having in mind a more complex process, the best is to click on the contact uh, the software button on the website. And of course, we can do a tailored presentation of our offering and, and product. Okay. Yeah, cool. So now I learned a lot. That's uh, perfect. So we already arrived at our final destination here. Uh, but before we are leaving the aircraft, uh, is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners? Yeah, maybe a general statement about the market that keeps growing, uh, as you mm -hmm. may know, and at least are enlarging the market uh, every year and it keeps growing uh, several percent um, a year. So recent studies have shown that there is an increasing interest in automation projects. So we are on a trendy, on a trendy market, you know, companies are have a heavy pressure on costs and automation is definitely a way to help them solve that issue by optimizing operational excellence. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really convinced um, processes have a, a nice future. So yeah, don't hesitate. Come and get in touch and uh, it would be a pleasure to provide assistance on your project. Okay, that's super interesting. And just one question because we just met and do you have a recommendation for me of a tool, expert, topic, method, whatever, I should have a closer look at to get new ideas on how to rethink processes. So do you have a recommendation what to look at? doesn't have to be out of the BPM space. could be something completely different just to get new ideas on how to rethink processes. Yeah, m most of the time the truth is on knowledge worker ends. So my, mm -hmm. my major recommendation would be ask, ask your teams, ask your customers, ask your employees, ask your providers where are their pains. And most of the time, you will identify ways to improve several areas of improvement. And, and most of them, as you will discover, rely on, on processes. So definitely kind of survey, questioning framework. This okay. is what I would recommend for you, you to identify, you know, your bottlenecks. Yeah. Okay, cool. Charles, thank you for all these insights. I learned a lot. It was quite interesting. And um, my final question to you is, How would you describe your flight experience of this episode in just three words? Oh, it was deep. <laughs> so thank, thank you for the nice questions. So yeah, we'd say deep, focused, and and at some point, you know, we were in a in an aircraft, so we'd, we'd say zero gravity, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So cool. So thank you so much for being my guest today. I'm really looking forward to more interactions with Bonita Soft in the future. And have a great day. So, bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Let's recap today's new process inspiration. Wow. At least I learned a lot about Bonita Soft and process automation today. So, it was super interesting to explore more about that. You know, 
I'm more the business guy, even if I studied information systems and used to code a bit. For me, it's super important to bring business and IT together. And I think Charles shared some interesting examples of how to do it. So if you are interested in learning more about how to automate and analyze processes with Bonita Soft, take a look at their website or reach out directly to Charles. So I'll put all the links into the show notes. Yeah, let's take a brief outlook into the future. Next week, the BPM event of the year takes place. I'm super excited to meet so many people of the new process community in person for the first time at the new process conference. So the plan is to have a very special live podcast recording in the evening. And if everything works out, we'll publish this already on April 24th. To make sure you don't miss any of the insights from the conference, register for free on our community platform, New Process Pro, by going to newproslab.com slash pro. But for now, thank you very much for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye and auf Wiedersehen. You've been listening to the New Process Podcast. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode for more tools, methods, and best practices to rethink your process and push it to the next level. Next level. Th thank you for listening. Before you leave, as you might know, I'm doing a lot of research on how to rethink processes and how to get people excited about processes. If you'd like to find out more about how to rethink your own process, you can download my free new process checklist which provides many impulses on how to push your process to the next level. To download it, just go to newprocesslab.com slash checklist. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.